gentlemen, and welcome back to the Philip Rosenberg Show. I am Philip Rosenberg, your host, and I am here with a very special guest this evening, Emily Dykes. Thank you, Emily, for joining me tonight. And so I want to tell our audience a little bit about you. So you are in charge of marketing, basically, for a project that a lot of people have heard of and that I have heard of and a lot of people are supportive of, uh, and that is the Motorcycle Relief Project. Now, for anyone that's living under a rock and hasn't heard about what exactly that is what we're what you're doing is you're setting up these uh long motorcycle rides like out in the open road with like the wind blowing against you for all these folks that have ptsd that have jobs or do things that cause them to have ptsd so like obviously like the military folks uh people that work for the police the fire department ems doctors that work in emergency rooms uh you know all this whole group of people they get to experience other people with the same exact condition. So people they can understand and who understand them. It's like some sort of great bonding experience. And uh, that's what you do. You help forward those ends. And so I'm so grateful that you're here and I'm so pleased to be able to do what little bit I can do to help out with that. So thanks again for joining me tonight, Emily. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, one of the, it, I, I just gave that explanation, and I think a lot of people have already heard of what you're doing, but just like, what did I miss? What more can be said by way of description? Well, I loved what you said about um, military and first responders coming together uh, to almost form a unit. What, what happens with a lot of these guys is they get really bonded, and women, they get bonded with their unit, and then they leave the military, and all these shared experiences are foreign to those of us who are uh, haven't been through it before. And so one of the coolest things that happens with Motorcycle Relief Project is we gather um, first responders together, we gather military together, and they get to spend five days uh, speaking the same language, riding through the hills of Colorado or Arizona, um, that we take them onto dirt roads. Um, so there's a little bit of uh, training that has to happen and it's a little out of their element. And then at night we, we talk. So we sit down and we talk about practices of gratitude, um, ways of being mindful in our lives so that we can, they can take that back to their lot, uh, lives at home and kind of, um, just approach life differently than maybe they were before the ride. Okay, so look at what you're tackling here. This is no small task. There are professionals the world over whose sole job and entire clinics devoted to helping people that have suffered from PTSD, typically vis-a-vis uh, -vis the military, but not always. And so there's, there's a bunch of stuff already happening. So I wanna know what is it about your program that is different? What is it that people are going to get from you and your program that they can't get in other places? Right, you're right. And we are not, uh, we are not therapists. We are not trained counselors. We are truly here to bring relief um, and a start conversation. And I really think of it as a launching off point. Um, we had one guy who I adore, his name is Eddie, and he was uh, one of the first responders at 9-11 and um, had just gone through every group counseling, regular counseling, I mean, he's gone through it all, came on the relief ride and just, I mean, it shifted his life. And I, I, I don't know what the magic is. Maybe the magic is just seeing somebody else who gets it and who also is carrying a similar pain. Maybe it's just reframing how we show up in life. Maybe it's just having fun and letting wind hit our face. Um, and trying something new like going on the dirt roads. There's a magic there and um, it's been pretty transformational for a lot of people. So this is, you know, you're kind of answering my next question a little bit without me actually having had to ask it. I wanna know like, how do you measure success? It, it, I mean, it's not like you have a ruler, you can say like, okay, you had 12 inches of PTSD, now only seven inches, right? Or, you know, a, a pound and a half, now only two ounces. Right, yeah. so what is, how do you recognize success? What does that look like for you? And how do you yeah. measure it, yeah. I guess that's a hard thing, especially if you're gonna go ask somebody, you know, give us money, and then we say, they're better, trust us. Yeah. Um, that, that's hard to say. Um, personally, I can speak to my own experience going on a ride. I'm not military, I'm not um, first responder, but what I learned on the ride is how to try things that terrify me. Uh, how to walk out of my comfort zone 
how to open up and be safe for somebody to talk to me and to talk to somebody and choose to believe that they're going to be safe. Um, on a much deeper level, we also have my good friend um, came on the ride and almost turned around and he was at the end of his rope. He was on the edge of ending it all. And I don't know what got him to Colorado that day uh, to go on the ride, but his, he exists today because of it. That's a measure of success, actually. I mean, I you have to certainly agree with that. So and this naturally leads me to my next question. How do you determine who can go with you and who can't? Is it open to anyone? Is it uh, you know anyone that claims to have PTSD? Do you need a clinical uh, diagnosis for it? Do you have to come from some branch of the civil service? What are the, what, you know, how do you decide who goes, who doesn't go? It's hard. We have a long list of people who want to go and they may not get to go. Um, we, we try to, because we only have eight spots, about eight spots on every ride. So it's an intimate, it's a small intimate group. Um, but they do need to have some form of PTSD and they need to be willing to talk about it. Um, we don't want people who are coming to fix their buddies um, we want people who are coming, who are willing to own that they are carrying a weight and that they want to talk to people about it. So um, an openness is a big thing that we're looking for, just anybody. And, and it's interesting too, um, there's a lot of people who are coming with PTSD that are directly from their service, but there are also people who just have it from life or mm -hmm. you know, life since the military. But the point is that they are coming and they are ready to talk. Which is brave. I mean, that's not exactly asking an easy thing. We're not going to probe. We're not going to make you talk. But there's an openness there that we're looking for. I mean, it's the objective, right? It's it's part of the therapeutic experience is to be able to share all of that. So, what kind of funding is required? Usually, there's eight people in in each trip. Around eight people. So, how much does it cost to have eight people go? You know, do they need motorcycles? Do they have to have their own. Do you provide them? What other expenses are there? It's a, it's a, it's expensive. Um, insurance and bikes are not cheap. Uh, neither is gear. Uh, you don't we, have to have your own bike. You can, you don't no. have to have a bike. Okay. We gotcha. have a whole fleet of, of bikes, mostly BMW GSs. Uh, they're 1200. So it's a not big sure. bike. It's yeah, it's yeah. A fun. Yeah. And we, um, and we bring a dirt coach on there so that they're not, um, uh, going off road. A lot of people are just pavement riders or Harley riders. And then we're like, here's a 1200. Also, we're going to take it on this fire road. Um, so we bring the dirt coach along. We provide all of their gear, uh, all the, uh, uh, the food and lodging. So they just have to be able to get to the ride. So if they can get to Colorado for the start of the ride and get home afterwards, then they're good to go. Got it. And what kind of funding, where does your funding come from? I should ask, you know, a lot of just private donors. Um, mm -hmm. we've got some really cool, generous people that we, uh, that believe in what we do and they g give us the money to keep going. We're always looking for more. I know COVID has, uh, lowered our donation pool, which is understandable. Everybody's a little stretched right now. So let's say, let's say I'm a rich guy and I think this is a really wonderful, great project. I've got enough money to help out one crew. What is, what does it cost me? to be able to sponsor one whole ride of eight people and all the other things that go with it. How much is that? Oh Lord, I- Round figure, like, round figure. Uh, it's around 20 grand. All right, so it's not the end of the world, right? No, it's, it's not. not. It's not the most amount of money you can spend on five days, in five days, right? No, it's not. And it's saving lives, literally saving lives. So it's, Interesting to note because of the time that we're in, meaning the pandemic, we're in July, uh, the, it's the, today the 10th or the 9th, one of those days. Mm -hmm. And we're still doing social distancing here in New York. Uh, we've experienced what we hope is the brunt of it. And maybe we're on the other side and we're watching the rest of the country explode. Uh, and part of that is everyone has to social distance and wear masks and all that. So this does seem like the kind of activity that is automatically social distancing, right? I mean, six feet away on a motorcycle, that's not hard to do. In fact, if you were within six feet, you would be doing something wrong, right? If you're traveling 100 miles an hour down the road within six feet of somebody, you need to like get out of the way immediately. You're about to have an accident, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is this something you can do right now in the midst of the pandemic? 
Well, we're reevaluating as everything, all the news comes out. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I have uh, an audience that cares about people. They want to help out. I know that they do. What can they do to make a donation? Where can they go? Or if they, if it sometimes it can't be money, it can be other things. What? How can people help? What can they do? Where can they go? Uh, I've started tuning my ears into what's happening around me. I'll go into a restaurant and I'll see um, a group of policemen sitting there and having breakfast. Tell them about it. I'll, I'll tell people about it. I think that's the greatest thing that we can do. If you have the financial ability to give, um, you can go to motorelief.org. That's M-O-T-O relief.org. Um, and donate would always accept that. Um, but sharing and talking to your friends and um, being being willing to talk to even the, the firefighter or the military person that you walk past and say, hey, we appreciate your service. Also, you could go on a free vacation. <laughs> All right, so now let's just take it. That's not your day gig, right? That's what you do because it's important to you and it's important to the world. And I appreciate that. And I want to just give, because you're actually a very talented individual outside of what we just talked about, right? So uh, Laura Emily Illustration is your business, right? So tell me a little bit about that. Tell my audience a little bit about that. What do you do? What can you do for them? What can they do for you? Yeah. Oh, honestly, I, I just love to tell stories. So I do that through whatever medium uh, comes to me. So I do a lot of uh, animation work, motion design, uh, no 3D. I'm not that fancy. Uh, and I do video. I'll shoot video, edit video. I go um, and I do a lot of illustration work. Yeah. So yeah, whatever's creative and whatever sounds like fun, I like to do it. What's the best way to get into contact with you if people want to ask you to help first a little bit of help on their projects? Uh, check out my website, uh, lauraemilyillustration.com. Lauraemilyillustration.com. Okay. Um, lauraemilyillustration.com. Laura <laughs> Got it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Emily, I want to thank you. I am filled with gratitude for your presence here today. Really, I wish you the very, very best with this project and with helping people that really need it. I want to thank you so much for joining me this evening. Thank you. It was a great time to get to know you a little bit. Thank you for asking good questions. Uh, the pleasure is mine. Have a wonderful night. You too. Bye. Bye-bye, folks. See you next time. Hi, this is Phil of the Phil Rosenberg Show, and I'm here to ask you to do me a small favor. Just take your finger, reach out, click the button that says subscribe. Just take your finger, reach out, and click the button that says subscribe. I need a bunch of subscribers, and the more subscribers I have, something good happens. I don't even know what that is. They tell me I got to have more subscribers. I believe them. So please do that for me. I'd appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the show.